Hello and welcome to Creepy Kingdom Presents Horror is the New Black. We're really excited to discuss the things we're going to discuss today. But before we do that, I must introduce myself. My name is James H. Carter II. I am the founder of Creepy Kingdom. We are a media outlet and film production company that is covering, creating all things creepy. And I'm joined today by two other members of the creepy cult. First of all, I'd like to introduce Michelle Halloween. Hello and greetings everyone. <laughs> and we're also joined by Tanisha. What's up? Who has no last name. She is like Madonna. That's yes, right. Tanisha. <laughs> <laughs> so we are excited and pumped and all the great adjectives to hear to talk about. <laughs> Horror is the new black. It is, we're gonna be diving into the black perspective being shown in mainstream horror, finally, <laughs> I guess, question mark. Um, has it always been there? Is this the first time? I Let's, let's jump into it. I, I think before anything, as far as the black perspective in horror, um, I think we've always been there. The presence has been there, but the problem yeah. is we haven't been listened to. And now we're being listened to, so we're gonna just roll with it and educate and inform and entertain as we would have been this whole entire time. So we appreciate everyone listening and giving us a watch. And I'm not talking about me because I don't act. I just like. I was doing like, films oh, we're looking forward to them. your films that are coming out, Michelle. What do you, what do you got on the docket? <laughs> no, I don't record. I mean, this is good enough for you guys, right? But no, seriously, sure. in all seriousness, it is nice to actually see and be so welcomed into all the um, outlets, you know, as far as the horror industry goes, not just Hollywood, but conventions, film, uh, film awards, independent yeah. filmmaking. And of course, big budget films are always a really, really good gateway to look at the black perspective. So, right. especially in the horror. Yeah. That's kind of what we're talking about. You're definitely a mainstream. I mean, there's obviously been black films from the black perspective and independent in horror and other sub genres, but it's, uh, this is kind of a new frontier seeing it in the mainstream, which mm -hmm. is pretty exciting. So we're going to talk about the uh, upcoming releases. We've got Lovecraft Country, a series coming to HBO. We've got Antebellum. And Candyman. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so uh, let's take a peek at some of these trailers. What's that book you've been reading about? It's about heroes who get to go on adventures, defeat the monsters, and save the day. say watching all of those uh or clips from those trailers back to back all at once really hits me uh right in the feels just seeing uh first of all they're all beautiful the cinematography in all of these trailers is just mind-blowingly beautiful but just seeing the black perspective um and the fourth is just i just said it hits me in the feels you know, for lack of a better phrase, um, but the main thing that I that I take away from uh, from seeing all of these trailers at once is that these films, the the subject matter in these films, are actually scary to me <laughs> because 
I know I may, I may, it may not be everyone feels this way, but I, I don't get scared by horror movies. Uh, you know, I was drawn to horror movies for the creepy aesthetic, but mostly uh, I see horror movies as empowering, as a release from the real life horrors of the world. Um, and and the, the predicaments that a lot of people find themselves in horror movies uh, are not really relatable to my life. But watching the trailer like Antebellum, where a, a black woman just living her carefree life, successful even, just killing it at life, and it's just like, nope, you're a slave again. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be the worst fear for black Americans, <laughs> you know. Um, Tanisha, what what were, what 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 was your emotions with all these? Trailers? Yeah, I mean, it it really. Um, I think more than just sort of like the black perspective on horror films, but seeing real life black experiences shown in there that are sort of rooted in their real life horrors. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's something I've told you both before in the past. You know, whenever people we're talking we're talking about horror movies, and whenever people ask me like, "Oh, what was the first horror movie that gave you nightmares?" And my answer is always like Mississippi burning uh -huh. because, you know, that was the first movie I remember watching and then having vivid nightmares about my family being attacked or hurt or harmed. You know, my dad grew up in Jim Crow South in Mississippi. And so these horror stories are part of my family's history. Like these stories yeah. have been passed down. And so to see them in movie form and, you know, hopefully other folks kind of see that um, they're sort of core rooted in history and real life situations. So. Oh, definitely. So Michelle, um, what I do you feel watching all this stuff? What I'm, what I was paying attention to a lot, especially when, um, reading Lovecraft Country and the original Candyman and the trailers for Annabella Candyman and Lovecraft Country was the rage that I saw that, you know, between all three stories, the rage, the fury, and the pushback, the defense mechanism that when we are pushed to a certain level, either we're going to come back fighting, we're going to get up, you're going to knock us down, we're going to get back up and we're going to start fighting for our basically our right to just live just to like exist you were saying, yeah just to exist <laughs> like you were saying in all three of these films um you have you know um you have atticus just going on about his life trying to take care of his father you have uh the gentleman in Candyman who's basically just being hounded by you know the spirit you can't help it it's like he's possessed by this anger and this fury from the spirit you know from this man that's haunting cabrini green cabrini green um, and with Annabellum, I've even had, and again, this is just a perspective that I've had, uh, her going back, she's doing her thing, she's successful, she has a nice family, and you see her, you know, going back, she's in, you know, slave times again, and you see her on the horse charging forward and just going, you know, leading the way to freedom, even yeah. though she already knows it. So she, it's kind of interesting, especially if you're kind of into spirituality and you're looking at um, you're, you're praying or you're asking for help when you're in these situations, even in real life. But what happens is we, we get enveloped and we get possessed by this rage and fury where we just want to be left alone or, and we just want the same opportunities. We want to move through our own life, but you keep knocking us down. You keep taunting us. You humiliate us. You're murdering us. So what do you expect us to do? You know, yeah, we're going to we, fight we're, back. And it, yeah. yeah, and it gives we're us We're fighting a really for equality. Good... Yeah, right. <laughs> like uh, yeah. that's, and it's, it's interesting seeing this played out in mainstream cinema <laughs> and it, uh, for the first time, uh, but well, not really for the first time, but just, you know, it's seemingly, but taking a, a few years back, let's actually take a look back at uh, Get Out. Um, all these films that we're discussing have Jordan Peele's touch and, it, and who knew that the silly guy from Key and Peele was gonna lead a horror uh, black revolution <laughs> Five right? years later. <laughs> I had no idea when I found out he was making a horror film. I was like, or he was involved in a horror film. Like, I'm what? Like, we can do anything. <laughs> it goes to show we can do any damn thing. We can change our mind, but it's it's that resilience that you know, sure. um, the, you know, human beings have, but you know, Black Americans have a resilience that you know we. It's just sometimes it's empowering. Sometimes, and most mm -hmm. of the time, it's devastating and it's horrifying, but. 
I love the empowerment that comes with it. And then we could put it into films because people, some people just, they, they exist by film only. They only know films. That's all they grew up on. They idolize filmmakers. They idolize the actors. Yeah. So when you're giving them the story, you sometimes you go, hmm, how many times do you watch a movie or a horror movie? And you're just like, I can relate to this situation. You know, and what would you do in this situation? So I'm hoping that what these films do is Maybe. inspire non-people of color to go, huh, this sucks and it's well, scary. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> the thing. I, I think uh, showing a different perspective helps. Representation in film is huge. And not just representation for the sake of being there, but having re a representation of a different perspective, I think is pretty impactful. Uh, but my question is, uh, now um, it was kind of a, a big slap in the face to a lot of people, kind of a little bit of a wake up call was so uh, in your face <laughs> with its, uh, uh, with its uh, message, and, but yet was very successful. Uh, do we think that this led the way for this new wave of films? I'll let you take that TV shit. <laughs> yeah, to me, you um, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> put me on the spot. Um, I mean, I think so. I, I think that the biggest thing with film, right, and the reason we're all fans of film is because we're seeking to feel something, right? We're, like, sure, make me feel something, connection. hit me yeah. somewhere in an emotional place where I have some kind of reaction, whether it's to laugh, to scream, to cry, what have you. Um, and so I think, you know, even though, yes, it's... It, it, it's very heavy handed with what the sort of theming and the messaging is. Um, I think it's sort of showing like we can tell these stories that hopefully are, are a gut punch to folks um, that sort of strike a nerve and make you feel something, whether you feel uncomfortable, whether you feel disgusted, whether you feel horrified, whether, you know, and, and um, with film, we're seeking to feel something. Right. We're, we're yeah. looking for something to strike a nerve in us, whether, you know, it's going to make us laugh. It's going to make us cry. It's going to make us scared or scream or whatever. Um, and I think with Get Out, it sort of struck a chord of making people people feel uncomfortable, making people feel uneasy, maybe pe making people feel a little bit disgusted or. And I think what came with it, not only, you know, obviously it was a huge success, but it struck a lot of conversations and a lot of dialogue, which great art does, right? It gets us yeah. talking, analyzing, thinking about it. And so I think, you know, it sort of showed like you can have these conversations in a big budget blockbuster horror film, television series, what have you. Um, and that it's going to get folks talking. It's going to engage people, um, hopefully on a deeper level. So. Well, let's hope so. Um, so real quick, which one of these three are, are are you guys looking forward to the most? Oh, man. I'd have to say I'm looking forward to all three of them. Um, but oh, yeah, obviously. But Candyman <laughs> definitely is number one. I hate being put on the spot when I ask, which one are you looking forward to the no, most? No, well, that's so what I did. I can do an so order. Take I it. know, James. You're always <laughs> bossing me around. <laughs> All right, boss, you get, uh, yeah. you get three answers. Number one, candy No, I don't want three answers. You said your answer. You said candy man. <laughs> Moving on. Tanisha. Oh, uh, how can you make me choose? Okay, I think for me, be, because I'm biased and it's a female protagonist, I'm I'm really stoked for Antebellum. All right. And I'm going to pick Lovecraft Country. So we are all equally excited. that, But uh, that's because I've started reading the book. Uh, I know that you started. I know that Michelle has read it all. It's good, and I, huh? And I'm, re I'm really excited to see it all play out. Okay. So um, we have a lot more to say about these films. And so we decided we're going to take a deeper dive on one of our podcasts, the Creepy Kingdom Movie Crypt podcast, which you can find by searching um, Creepy Kingdom in any podcatcher. So check that out. And also, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the fundraiser here. Cre uh, Team Creepy Kingdom has been raising money. <laughs> Um, for all the great causes, I, I'm proud of all of our team members that have been going hard, raising money. And, uh, you know, when you, we, it's still time for you to donate, get in there, pick Team Creepy Kingdom, and let's bring it home. And lastly, I have a huge announcement that we were really excited to use on uh, Midsummer Scream is letting us announce it on this platform is that Creepy Kingdom has a two month Halloween celebration filled with original content, interactive activities, and two live streaming events. 
It's called Creepy Kingdoms Halloween at Home. We're going to be kicking it off live August 30th. We're going to be doing live Halloween night with so much fun stuff. But we're going to break down everything that's going to happen in that live stream at the end of the month. Uh, so let's throw it to that. But actually, before we throw it to our, our little promo trailer, any, any last words? And you have 10 seconds. <laughs> creepy Kingdom rules. Yes, keep it creepy. <laughs> All right, let's go. Are you sad that Halloween is canceled? Angry that you don't get to celebrate like the years past? Scared that this year won't be any fun? Well, boys and ghouls, turn that pumpkin frown upside down. Creepy Kingdom is bringing Halloween to you. Prepare yourself for the most spooktacular social distanced event ever. Creepy Kingdom's Halloween at Home. The celebration kicks off on August 30th with a live streamed event showcasing some of the tricks and or treats we have in store. Our celebration concludes with a live streamed party on Halloween night. We will be bringing you two dark months of ghoulishly good times. Follow Creepy Kingdom on social media to make sure you don't miss out on any of the spooky fun.